financial accounting, we're doing the statement of cash flow. And so far we have looked at the operating section, the investing section, and now we're going to do the financing section, which means we're going to look at the innards of the long-term liability accounts and the owner's equity or stockholder's equity accounts. And the first one we want to look at is long-term notes payable. And it shows on the balance sheet that we had a beginning balance of $35,000. We have an ending balance of $37,000. So we know that we bought, because it went up, some uh, some, well, we bought something and we financed it with a note payable. You'll recall that we bought furniture for $22,000 and gave a note in exchange. And that's why notes payable increased by $22,000 because we bought it. And where do we disclose this note for furniture? Down there at the very bottom as a non-cash transaction, didn't we? So we've already taken care of this. But $35,000 plus $22,000 does not equal $37,000. Oh my goodness. That means notes payable must have decreased. Well, the only way a note payable can decrease is if we repaid something. Now, fortunately, the problem tells you that you repaid $20,000 in long-term debt. Even if they didn't tell you that, could you have figured it out? You bet. So that is going to show up on the uh, investing, uh, excuse me, the financing section as a repayment payment or a cash outflow from a note payable. We paid a note. The second account that I want to look at is common stock. You know that common stock has a beginning balance that's a credit. It has an ending balance that's a credit. So just looking at this account without reading the additional information on the balance sheet, you can see it increased. Well, the only way common stock increases is if you sell some stock. And if you sell stock, do you usually get cash? You bet. So are we going to show $25,000 as a cash inflow because we sold stock? Yes. The last thing we need to analyze that's on our balance sheet is, the state, uh, is retained earnings. And retained earnings started the year with a $3,700 balance, ended the year with a $17,300 balance. We know that retained earnings is increased by the amount of the net income. Has the net income already showed up in the statement of cash flows? Yes. It's up there in operations, isn't it? But if I add these two together, it doesn't give me 17300 So what's the one thing that will make retained earnings decrease? That one thing is if you declare and pay a cash dividend. So finding the difference here of what we will need to make this ending balance, we see that we paid cash dividends of $4,300. Plus, this exercise tells me that. Isn't that good? So did cash flow out in the financing section because you paid cash dividends? Sure did. So what do we have? We're going to have to remember to put this on the statement of cash flows, the repayment on the statement of cash flows. This is already on the statement of cash flows. This is already on the statement of cash flows, and we need to show that. So let's put it on our statement of cash flows and see how we do. Let's see if we get that ending balance like we want. Okay, so the first thing we did is we repaid a note payable. And that repayment meant cash went out $20,000. We also issued common stock which meant cash came in of $25,000. And finally, we paid a cash dividend, which meant cash went out of $4,300. So as far as our cash flow from financing, uh, $25,000 minus $20,000 minus $4,300 meant that the cash was positive from financing activities of $700. So let's see. 
If cash flow from operations was 45,000, positive cash inflow, and cash flow from investing was a positive $11,700, and cash flow from financing was a positive 700, does that come up to our change in cash? You know, it does. So, we must have done all of this correct because we came to our figure. Now, what do we do with this change in cash? We're going to add it to our beginning cash. And in our problem, beginning cash was $69,900. So if I add these two together, I will get, oh, that's my ending cash. So $69,900 is my ending number. It's what I get. Beginning cash, if I copy it correctly, uh, according to the book, is $12,500. So $12,500 plus $57,400 does come to $69,900 ending cash. And then remember, down here at the bottom, the non-cash transactions. So that's cash flow statement in its full glory.